Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-black ninja deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, a deck featuring a ton of new cards from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, and at the center of the deck is the ninjutsu mechanic shown here on Silver for Master, a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two rat ninja creature. It has ninjutsu for a blue and a black, which means we can pay that cost and return an unblocked attacker we control back to our hand to put this creature onto the battlefield from our hand, tapped and attacking. This is an ability, so it also gets around counter spells, as we're not actually casting the master, so that's nice. And then in the case of Silver for Master, it says ninjutsu abilities we activate cost one generic mana less to activate once that's in play, so it can discount future ninjutsu abilities, and author ninja and rogue creatures we control get plus one plus one, so very nice ability to potentially get access to at instant speed once we enable a ninjutsu, so that can catch the opponent off guard. And all the creatures in the deck are either ninjas or rogues, so they will all get that plus one plus one bonus. And then very important in any ninjutsu deck is having the early enablers, meaning cheap evasive creatures that we can play early, attack with, go unblocked, and then use those to put our ninjutsu creatures into play. And in this deck we've got 10 one mana flyers that fit that description. So we've got 4 copies of Network Disruptor, a 1-1 one -one artifact creature Moonfolk Rogue with flying, and when it enters a battlefield can tap target permanent. So in the later turns we can maybe tap down a blocker so we can keep attacking and enabling our ninjutsu synergies. And then we also have the full playset of Thousand Face Shadow, a 1 1 human ninja at rare. It flies and has ninjutsu for 4 mana, so we can use it early as an enabler, pick it back up, and then once it's back in our hand, we can still use the powerful 4 mana ninjutsu ability, saying when the Thousand Face Shadow enters a battlefield from our hand, if it's attacking, create a token that's a copy of another target attacking creature, and the token enters a battlefield tapped and attacking, so we can start cloning some of our creatures, which is quite nice. And then two copies of Merfolk Windrobber, a 1-1 Merfolk Rogue. So as a rogue it still gets the plus one plus one bonus, it flies. The other ability is not super relevant here, as we're not really playing into the whole mill theme. Then at two mana we've got our Silver for Master, as well as two copies of Nezumi Prowler, a 3-1 Rat Ninja artifact creature, ninjutsu for two mana, and when it enters a battlefield, target creature we control gains Death Touch and Life Link until end of turn. So we can just hard cast a Prowler to get an attack in, but the ninjutsu ability could also catch the opponent off guard and turn an unfavorable trade into a favorable one. Then we also have two copies of the Silencer, a 2-1 human ninja with ninjutsu also for two mana. And when the Silencer deals combat damage to a player, we may discard a creature card. And when we do, we get to destroy target creature or planeswalker that player controls. So by picking up a creature to enable ninjutsu, we'll have a creature to discard in the first place to enable the ability. And then we also have the full playset of Prosperous Thief, which I put in the 2-drop slot, because Ninjutsu is only 2 mana, and this is arguably the best creature we can put in play on turn 2, because it says whenever one or more ninja or rogue creatures we control deal combat damage to a player, we get to create a treasure token, and then we can use that treasure token to still replay our 1 mana evasive creature, so we can keep enabling these ninjutsu synergies, and then also a nice 3-2 creature. Then moving up the curve, we've got the full place that of a Biting Palm Ninja, a 3-3 that enters a battlefield with a Menace counter on it, so you might remember those from Ikoria. And when the ninja deals combat damage to a player, we may remove a Menace counter from it, and if we do, that player reveals their hand and we get to choose a non-land card from it and exile that card. So a very powerful discard effect stapled onto our creature, and Ninjutsu also for 3 mana, which can potentially get a discount from our Silver Fur Master. And then topping off our curve, we've got some legendary creatures with the Moon Sage's Scion, a 3 mana 3 2, Ninjutsu's for 4 mana, so a little bit more expensive. And when the Scion deals combat damage to a player, we get to exile the top card of each player's library. And until end of turn, we may play one of those cards and then pay life instead of paying its mana cost. So we get a nice free card. And then we also have two copies of Satoru Umezawa, a 3-mana 2-4 legendary human ninja, saying whenever we activate a ninjutsu ability, look at the top three cards of our library, put one of them into our hand, and the rest on the bottom in a random order, only triggers once each turn, so it can provide a nice bit of card advantage. And it also says each creature card in our hand has ninjutsu for 4 mana, so we could use this outside of a ninja deck, just to cheat some very expensive creatures into play. In this particular build we're just using it more as card advantage, but we might feature it in a future combo-oriented build as well. 
And then taking a look at our non-creature spells, we want a lot of cheap interaction, and a bound spell like Fading Hope is perfect to get a blocker out of the way. Can also use it to maybe save one of our creatures in a pinch, and to copies of Blood Chief's Thirst, which can also attack larger creatures or planeswalkers if we kick it. And then a mana base features some of the new legendary lands with the Soaring City, which can also bounce a creature, gets a discount if we control legendary creatures, and the Abandoned Mire can get back creatures from our graveyard. And then we also have two creature lands with Hive of the Eye Tyrant, which can turn into a 3-3 creature with Menace that can exile a card from the opponent's graveyard, can maybe help us deal those last points of damage. And then a mana base is heavily skewed towards blue, since we need that blue mana on turn 1 to play our Flyers and then a couple dual lands to round out the mana base. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw and we've got a keeper, some early enablers for Silver Fur Master, and then Umezawa to maybe provide some card advantage. Another master. Could of course just hard cast it on turn two instead of using Ninjutsu. Alright, let's play our Hive while it's still untapped. And yeah, probably no need to Ninjutsu here, let's just hard cast it. Hit for two. Opponent maybe on an Abzan Enchantment deck. And battle for Bretagard, gonna start making tokens. Okay. So I can tap their token, and then Ninjutsu the second master. Alternatively, I can play Umezawa to then set up Ninjutsu next turn to draw a card, which I also don't mind. And we still have a profitable attack here, so let's do that instead. And once we get double Master in play, we can Ninjutsu any creature for just a blue and a black, so that's nice. And the Disruptor tapping something down is going to be a little bit more relevant. Alright, Chariots, so put in more of a tokens deck. This is the old Chariot making two tokens, so a little bit more powerful. And I probably want to have a look at the opponent's hand here. So I can play a Disruptor, then tap a creature down, not that it really matters. Uh, but we want to play the Master main phase. And then I can Ninjutsu the Palm Ninja for just a single black. So that's powerful. And we'll get to take a look at the opponent's hands. And trigger Umezawa. And both a Moon Sage Scion and Fading Hope are nice. I think I want to get a little bit of interaction here since we have Umezawa already providing card advantage. And we'll see what the opponent's working with here. Next turn, our opponent does get a ton more tokens. Opponent gonna try and crew chariots. Could actually bounce it with Fading Hope here, but still would rather replay the Disruptor. Right, opponent's got some powerful Planeswalkers and a Vanishing Verse. So Vanishing Verse cannot kill any of my multicolored creatures, could kill a Disruptor, but that's maybe still okay. I think Spider Queen and Ren are more problematic if they can actually cast them, making Reach creatures. And then which one? I guess Spider Queen, since Ren and Seven we can just deal with the token with Fading Hope more easily. Although, that leaves the question, do I want to keep up Fading Hope in case I go Ren minus copy with Chariots? I think I still play Disruptor here. And then if they do attack with a Chariot, at least we get to eat it for free. And then, yeah, we'll have to battle through double... Renan 7 tokens, but at least we can maybe tap one down and bounce another. So the ground is quite stalled. 
but our opponent is already at 9, so it's not going to take much for us to finish them off. Alrighty. So I'm going to move to combats. Hope they don't Exile Disruptor before I get to Ninjutsu, assuming no blocks are declared. Right, I guess her opponent does get to Vanishing Verse before I get to Ninjutsu, the second Disruptor here. So I could Fading Hope my own Disruptor. I think I gotta keep up Fading Hope for the Ren and 7 token, so we'll let that happen. And then probably have to replay another one to start applying pressure. And then hope to pick up some more ninjutsu creatures that we can put in play through our flyer. Right, opponent can play Renan 7. And then I want to wait for them to potentially crew Chariot and attack, because then we get to kill Chariot and bounce a token in response so they don't get to keep it. As opposed to bouncing it now, in which case the opponent wouldn't attack with the Chariot. So wait for them to target the token. And then take it out. And then Umezawa can gobble up the chariot. Our flyer could finish off Renan 7. Ooh, and a Prosperous Thief isn't bad. So... Let's send Disruptor at Renan 7. And then I can put the Thief in play using Ninjutsu. And let's go with a cheaper one. And that can still finish off Renan 7 while finding some more cards. Another Fading Hope or a Thousand Faced Shadow. Let's go with more Fading Hopes. So that dies. And then. Probably replay the Disruptor once again. Another run in seven, glad we have an answer. And then might as well do it now to scry and improve our next draw step. And a Wind Robber. I guess it's still fine since we can still ninjutsu with Umezawa to provide more cards. So getting to see the value of our legend here. We're getting close to the point where we can make more ambitious attacks, but for now I'm happy with the status quo. Find another ninjutsu creature. And then I could even... Ninjutsu this one, although I wouldn't be able to copy another attacking creature, so it wouldn't really help much. So replay Disruptor. And then next turn I probably go for an all-out attack. And then we can copy another Silver for Master to put my team. Shambling Gas, that's fine. Ooh, and found a Moon Sage of Scion too. So many great options. But uh, yeah, I think we can be pretty aggressive here. So this we can Ninjutsu for double blue, this for one and a black. Opponent counting on our Silver Fur Master dying, which I guess with the Shambling Gas they could still achieve. And that would also kill the other Silver Fur Master. Alright, so... That happens. I guess what I can do is not deal lethal damage to Shambling Gas to avoid that. So that's another neat trick. 
So, ninjutsu this. Pick up Disruptor. Find a thief. Copy Silver for Master. And then we can ninjutsu this as well. Picking up a Wind Robber. And then I guess I could technically keep going. Prosperous Thief, pick up Thousand Faced Shadow. And Ninjutsu this once again. Picking up a random creature to copy Silver for Master a second time. So, yeah. Lots of awesome combos here in the final stretch. And as I mentioned, if we don't deal lethal damage to Shambling Ghast, we can just deal three to the first creature that's uh, blocking. Then we also avoid potentially Shambling Ghast dying. Although with the fact that we copied Silver for Master a second time, it didn't matter. And this was fine too. So yeah, sometimes you can pick up the same creature multiple times, especially when you get the discount from Master. So a ton of great synergies here. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. This hand's not ideal. We do have some early enablers, which is nice, but the only ninjutsu creature we want to play is still four mana, so it's pretty far away. So I think we got to look for something a little bit different. This hand has potential. It's awkward that our blue source comes into play tapped, but how can I say no to this? So is this a case of just getting rid of the disruptor anyway? And then, you know, turn to Silver for Master into more copies. And then we'll eventually draw some cheaper creatures or more high impact ninjas. And then keep Fading Hope as interaction. Maybe. Alright, turn one Usher. Picked up a Swamp. So glad I kept Fading Hope as interaction. Thalia, not super relevant against our creature-heavy start. So play one of them. And hope that we can make our team big enough to start blocking. Which is not going to happen in the early turns. So we'll take four. And a Sun Gold Sentinel. Alright, play another Master and a Tap Land. And hope there's no removal. And then we're getting to the point where we wouldn't mind drawing some flying creatures. Another Usher is fine. And an all-out attack. What does this mean? The Mono White deck doesn't play a ton of instant speed removal, but I guess they could have a Fateful Absence, although they can't cast it because of their own Thalia. So not sure what to make of this attack. They could have a second main portable hole to essentially get rid of both creatures. Alright, that worked. And a backup Thalia. Alright, that seemed like a good exchange. So now... I could consider turning the corner and maybe attack with uh, one of my masters. Although using ninjutsu here is not going to accomplish much. But that being said, I think I can still afford to attack. And we'll play another. Could have played that one, main phase one, I suppose. To get in one extra point of damage. So we still have Fading Hope as interaction. Adversary, something we would love to bounce to maybe blow the opponent out in the middle of combat. Opponent's gonna hang back. 
So I could bounce now to then start attacking with Hive. Yeah, it's probably fine to bounce either way. Islands, I can bottom. And our opponent packs it in, yeah, triple silver for Master. Gets the job done, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and once again we have the early enablers, but no early ninjutsu creatures. So, gonna have to mulligan, this is much better. And I probably get rid of one of the thousand-faced shadows and hope it doesn't get removed. And then turn two, I could already ninjutsu the master, or we can just hard cast it to then ninjutsu ninja on turn three. Which, against a potential Doomscar here, is pretty interesting. Yeah, if I play master, opponent next turn just swipes the board. Doesn't leave us in a great position. Then again, if I ninjutsu master, we're not applying a ton of pressure. So we might have to run into this sweeper anyway. Which is unfortunate. Ideally, it's not a Doom Scar. And then next turn, our Biting Palm Ninja can have a look. Fateful Absence, that's fine. Alright, so they may still have a Doom Scar, but they just didn't have a land 3. But now we can have a look with our ninja to see what else they're working with. And then uh, next turn we can ninja to the Thousand Faced Shadow. Although I guess we wouldn't have anything to copy. So our point is blue white control. Double deluge, they're pretty far from casting. Fading Hope and the Wandering Emperor. Probably take Fading Hope as the cheapest interaction. They can even cast it after drawing a Plains and using Field of Ruin. Whereas the Emperor, while potentially more powerful, we can still answer with Thirst. And uh, yeah, it's just a bit more expensive for them to cast. Revelry makes two tokens, that's annoying. And then next turn they could Doomscar. So probably still ninjutsu, but our opponent's likely to block. So I guess we attack first, see if they do indeed block. And then probably end up cracking the clue. Now important to note, our opponent still doesn't have double white for a potential Doomscar. So maybe... I pass here, and then next turn I can thirst a token, ninjutsu the shadow, just so I can pick up the ninja and maybe make them discard again. If I play my shadow and they draw the planes, that's bad, and even if they don't, it's not really applying a ton more pressure. So I think I just pass, but... If we draw another ninjutsu creature, that might change the equation. Okay. Now, I like using Thirst on the token, attacking, and then using ninjutsu on the Scion. That seems good. And then our opponent's probably gonna Field of Ruin to get their double white sorted. But now we only have the one creature in play, which is kind of a must-answer creature. So that works. And then, don't really want a Doom Scar, so I guess the card advantage not really coming into play here. So our opponent's going to reset the board, and then, yeah, I mean, they could still catch back up with all those powerful 4-drops in hand. So, could still be in trouble. 
Another Ravelry instead. So that does buy them more time. And lets them block, and then... Yeah, now we have to overextend into the Doomscar. So that was not what we wanted to see at all. Do I just play Thousand Faced Shadow? I guess I can attack, they'll probably trade for both tokens. Which then incentivizes me to still play a creature out and then probably hang on to the ninja so I can ninjutsu. So that kind of forces them to still wipe the boards. Although if they hit land 4, then the Wandering Emperor becomes kind of a problem too. Eh, opponent's being patient. So... Now let's attack. Ninjutsu. And a Fading Hope. Fair enough. Although I can still ninjutsu something else here. I like a Prowler. So our opponent probably should have fired off Fading Hope before no blockers were declared to avoid getting into this mess. Now we also fizzled the Scry from Fading Hope, and I don't want to overextend into Doomscar, which I, th I think is still what the Exalt card is, but who knows. Opponent passes. I'll attack. Now let's try the Ninja this time. And have another look. Alright, double wonder. I guess we'll take one still. And then do I want to commit another creature to the board? I don't think so. Right, land four, so now they can play the Emperor. They're just gonna main phase. Okay, next. Probably want to play two creatures out. Disruptor could maybe tap down a blocker, although that's not going to be relevant unless they minus one. So I guess Prowler plus Disruptor is fine. And then the Emperor can just plus one, which doesn't do anything. Show them how we greet our enemies. And yeah, there's a Doomscar, so... My instincts were right. So I guess we'll start playing more creatures out now. to draw more spells. See you later. Deluge can find a ton of answers. Let's attack. And then I can ninjutsu a couple times here. I 
at least that gets around counter spells. Points at three, and hopefully there's no doom scar. Opponent's gonna go digging. That's a good sign. They won't be able to cast doom scar, so they're maybe finding another sunset revelry. Although they've already found two copies, fateful absence could help. Yeah, there's a revelry. Opponent back to seven. So we'll attack. Put on double chumps. And then now, what do we want to do? Probably ninjutsu. Now it's very cheap to copy the uh, shadow at least, so that's nice. Just double blue. Second ninjutsu again. And yeah, this would be lethal, so will a damage happen? Alright, and there we have it. So, very close game here against Blue White Control. Getting to see the power of Thousand Face Shadow in the late game, even if we're flooding out a bit. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and our hand seems keepable. We're missing a 2-mana ninjutsu creature, but we can ninjutsu one on 3, so I'll try it. Opponent on the red-white, maybe a burn deck. So they could have some removal for our ninjas, even at instant speed. Guess we'll find out. Milling the opponent could also be a disadvantage with adversary in their deck to maybe replay spells out of the graveyard. Sunrise Cavalier, okay. So red, white, aggro, take five. And then now it's time to probably ninjutsu the Biting Palm Ninja and have a look, or we could play Umezawa to try and stabilize, although any removal spell is going to make that more difficult. So we're taking quite a bit of damage. I think I still go for the Biting Palm here. And then probably still send both. We'll pick up Thousand Faced Shadow, which we can maybe ninja suit later. And oof, opponent's hand is stacked. Angel Fire Ignition, at least we can exile so they don't get it back. Also worth noting, because we didn't cast anything, Cavalier is going to transform to Knight and get an extra counter. So there was also an argument for still playing Humezawa. But um, yeah, not sure what to do about this hand. We desperately need to draw some bound spells. So I can try and take one Ignition. Because long term, it's still going to be hard to beat. But, uh, yeah, not loving my position. So this might be a quick one. Need to find Fading Hope as soon as possible. Blood Chief's Thirst would be fine too. Uh, at least now if we do draw Fading Hope, we're not that far behind anymore. And Network Disruptor instead. So my last chance is maybe to ninjutsu the Scion and hope to hit one of the top. I can ninjutsu Thousand Face Shadow, but then we're just going to be dead on the way back. Alright, so... Cross our fingers here. Ninja stays back to block adversary. And hope that there's 
a fading hope or some other removal waiting for us on top. There's a fading hope, so game is not over yet. We're at four. Still need to dig for more answers. Opponent can of course flash back ignition, which would still be quite powerful here, forcing me to chump. But they might take a different approach. But yeah, we play to our outs and we're still in the game at least. Right, opponent goes for ignition. I have to jump, still take one trample. And I wouldn't be able to attack past the 4-4. At least no more trample sources we have to worry about, other than maybe Cavalier next turn. So I probably want to play a bunch of creatures out. I guess never mind, Disruptor can still tap Adversary to allow for an attack. So that might be worth it. And then... What else do we want to do? Probably have to play Umezawa and Windrobber for additional blockers. But let's see what we hit with Scion first. Uh, and just some land, sadly. Okay. So Mizawa could block Cavalier. Land 5 means they can maybe put a counter on the 3-3 Trampler. So Mizawa can no longer block it profitably. So not what I wanted to see here. I guess we do have a backup, but... This is not a winning line of having to chum block, of course. Should have waited to play my land last turn. So I could have played one off uh, Scion. So that was my bad. Okay, so now what? I guess soak up for trample, chum block. Don't see a better line. Thief can make some treasure. Opponent might chump with the aspirin to prevent Scion from triggering. Although at three life, there's not too many spells we can hit that we can actually cast. If I play Umezawa first, I could still Ninjutsu Thief, draw with Umezawa, make a treasure. Although we're going to be very far behind on board. Our deck's not very good at playing defense. So is there a better line available that I don't see? Yeah, maybe going for Umezawa, Ninjutsu Thief, and hope to find Fading Hope is still our best shot here. Let's attack. Opponent does chump. So, yeah, Ninjutsu find Fading Hope is still an out. As we get a treasure, no Fading Hope, sadly. Um, so, now I guess I'll have to chump Cavalier with Umezawa and chump Adversary with one of my one drops. And for next turn, what do I want? Probably a land over another thief. And let's play Disruptor. And pass. So we're trying to hang in there, but it's not looking good. Opponent can play a kicked adversary, although there's nothing for them to get back. But it would be a 3-3. So chump cavalier, chump 4-4, four, four, still take 3 and we're dead. So I guess I should have played Shadow as a chum blocker. Alright, GG's. Close game. Just needed to find a little bit more interaction along the way. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand is missing an early enabler, so don't think I can keep... This is better. And then probably get rid of Silencer as the most conditional of the ninjas. Won't be able to play Master on 2, but the plan is to Ninjutsu Thief. 
Ooh, Clarion Spirits. That can be quite the problem, making 1-1 one, one Spirit Tokens. As that can prevent us from using Ninjutsu in the future. So I could decide to Fading Hope Clarion Spirits. Although if they have another 1-drop, they could just go Spirit into 1-drop, make a token. If I replay Shadow, then I'm kind of forced to Fading Hope the token. Which means I can still, I guess, play Master to pump the 1-1, one, one, so maybe that's fine, actually. And then instead of going for Biting Palm Ninja, I might play this main phase to pump the team. And have Fading Hope as interaction. Ooh, two Clarion Spirits could be bad. And an Usher. So this is just guy Spirits, maybe? Well, now the plan is maybe thirst one of the Clarion Spirits before they get more out of hand. Alternatively, I could have played Master main phase attack if they double block with the tokens. I can Fading Hope one of them. But that still leaves Clarion Spirit as a pretty big problem. Maybe I just have to hope they can't enable Clarion Spirit going forward if they're out of one drops, perhaps. So let's try that approach. Attack with both, and hope to put Fading Hope to use. And if I get to connect with one of my ninjas, I'll get a treasure, which means I can still thirst a Clarion Spirit anyway. Alright, I guess we'll bounce a token. And another Fading Hope I'll keep. And Thirst the Spirit. Alright, so that was a pretty decent turn. Our opponent passes with all their mana up. They might be splashing red for Showdown of the Skulls. Alright, let's move to combats. And probably don't want to attack with the Master. Don't want to put that in harm's way, but the rest can attack. And a Spectral Adversary. Alright, so it's more of a Spirits deck using a blue here. Makes sense. And then do I want a Fading Hope anything? Could bounce the Adversary itself. Could let the trade happen. Maybe we get to Ninjutsu the Biting Palm Ninja. I guess I could always Fading Hope and then Hard Cast Ninja. It's not as good though. So let's go to damage. Opponent does go for the double block there as well. So we'll bounce a token once again, save Prosperous Thief, and a Hive. Do we want to keep a Hive on top? Probably not, since I'm going to be far from activating it. It's better than probably a Swamp would be, but it's still not ideal. Opponent passes with 4 mana once again. We drew another Hive. Okay, so probably attacking with just Prosperous Thief in case of another adversary. They don't have double blue at least. They could also have the the new Planeswalker to kill a tapped creature, which is maybe still a reason to send both. I guess it makes sense. Right, just an adversary block master. And then I'll ninjutsu. And we'll have a look. Right, they're holding a counter spell and a winged portent, which isn't doing much for them. Take the snare, a card that's pretty weak against the ninja deck, as ninjutsu gets around it. All right. Can main phase master and then ninjutsu for one mana, the ninja. So we can pick it back up. All right, opponent drew another snare, unfortunately. Still fine to ninjutsu. And then we can maybe use the biting palm ninja's ability in the future. Now I can maybe also attack with hive. 
So things are looking up. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. So yeah, overall, this blue-black ninja deck needs to have a solid opening hand for it to really function. So important to have those early enablers. In terms of some of the card choices and ninjas, there's still a little bit of wiggle room. There's certainly a few that are untouchable, like the one that makes treasure tokens. I would always play four. But uh, some of the weaker two drops, the uncommons for instance, I could see replacing with maybe the common blue ninja that can injutsu for just a single blue, giving us a bit more card selection to get rid of extra lands in the late game if we don't have one of our mana sinks. And uh, could also experiment with playing more legendary lands or creature lands to give us more mana sinks in the late game once our deck starts running out of steam. And of course there's also the Planeswalker, which is not the best fit with Ninjutsu in the sense that we don't want to be picking up the unblockable ninja token, but it is still a powerful card in its own right, and especially against control strategies where they might have sweepers to deal with all our creatures. It would be nice to have a Planeswalker that can stay in play to provide card advantage. So again, lots of ways to approach the deck, but the core of cheap 1-mana evasive creatures with some of the better 2-mana ninjutsu cards is where you want to start. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.